Welcome to the Land Geek Podcast, your resource for information and tips to making money by buying and selling land. Let the Land Geek show you how to make a passive income by working smart, not working hard. Learn strategies and tricks to make money buying and selling raw land today. And here is the man that's going to help you do that, the Land Geek. Hey, it's Mark Podolsky from www.thelandgeek.com, your favorite niche land real estate website. And today I've got my continued guest. He's not really a guest because we don't treat him with that much respect, but we sure do love him. Duran Frazier. How you doing? Hello, Duran? sir. From landhub.com, reserveland.com. And we don't have a ton of time today, so we're going to get right into it. Last podcast, we were talking about Facebook marketing, and we kind of ran out of time, so I want to continue it because Duran has uh, some experience with it that is unique, and I want to hear more about that that issue. So, Duran, let's just get right into it. Let's let's skip the small talk. What's going no, on? No, I'm not going to skip the small talk, Mark, because I'm I'm hurting. I'm sore. I'm yeah. Uh, well, yeah why why are you so sore? Come on. Because I, I've gotten back into doing push-ups every day, which is not really good for my back. But um, I, I was just telling you, uh, yesterday I was out uh, golfing in the morning, 18 holes at La Costa. And then in the afternoon, I decided to play a little basketball for a couple hours. <clears throat> and then on top of that, I left and I drove by the surf, had my surfboard in the car and decided I'd get an hour of surfing in. By the, I think right at about an hour, my entire body seized up. I was, I, every single muscle had just basically, I, I don't know if you guys have ever cramped multiple muscles at once, um, especially when you're in the water, it's not a good, it's not a good thing. So I'm, I'm sort of flailing a little bit in the ocean going, uh, am I going to get in the beach here? I've got some cramps, like my leg cramps, my arms are cramping. So I just kind of floated in and, and just like laid on the, on the sand for a second till <laughs> the cramps went away. And then I walked up to the car and the next day I felt every ounce of what I just did. Um, realizing I'm not 26, uh, but I'm 36. So, Old man, uh, look yes. at my life. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I'm not going <laughs> to complain about my life being hard. I'm just going to complain about the fact that uh, that I'm getting old and, and yeah. life isn't the way it used to be with yeah. my body. You, you poor man of leisure. Yes, yes. And the years are catching up to you. Yes, that is so true. So, um, I just want to let you know I'm, I feel a little a little sore, and uh, but hey, I'm okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna get through this. I'm gonna push through it. Good. <laughs> all right i'm glad i'm glad to hear that yes all right yes. so we were talking last week about facebook facebook marketing we like facebook so much better even though we don't have really good analytics to prove it but hypothetically speaking just shooting in the dark we don't like twitter as much we don't like linkedin as much are there any other big social media sites out there that are even worth looking at you know, what, one that people kind of overlook is Pinterest.com. Pinterest, sure. Now, I don't know. I think, I, I think it's I just 80% of it's women, though. And I think, it, I think it, more men it, buy land. The, the demographic's changing, but it, it's a, it's a, it's a photo-driven site. So, you know, again, going back to what we sell, we sell based on what, Mark? Yeah, pictures. Pictures, the images of the property, images. what we're trying to portray. So the story. Uh, Yep, it's all about the story that you that you paint, and I think at the end of the day, Pinterest would be a great place. And you know, although I would say my buy my my buying pool is probably nine eighty five percent ninety percent men. Right. Um, if you find a niche within Pinterest, stick to it um, because I'm sure they're out there. Um, it's it, it, again, people do post pictures of land. But I mean, how how pretty is a piece of land? Well, if it's a piece of land showing you know a lake on a you know lake view from a property, it 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 is it is a pretty picture, and I'm sure women would like that. Right. Um, so you know maybe like talking about my you know my my dream piece of land or whatever it is. But that that's certainly a place to look. Uh, but yeah, Facebook, Twitter, those are the two platforms that you you really want to market with. Um, and I don't have enough experience with Twitter to really give you my uh, opinion. I, I've, um, I I've tried Twitter and. It's. I don't think it's for our niche, honestly. Yeah, I don't even understand Twitter. From it's, from a marketing, I think, for, I think Twitter's for athletes and celebrities and everyone. I, I, yeah, I think that's what it's for. I think it's for athletes, celebrities. I think it's for people that want to engage very quickly within that type of celebrity. I don't. I mean, you can link to stuff, and 
I, I don't know. I, I really don't understand. I, I've tried to sell land on Twitter, and I don't think that they want to engage more with you on Twitter than just say, hey, here's a link, here's a link, here's a link. Buy my land, buy my land, buy my land. That That's just noise on Twitter. You know, you know, it might be your picture too, Mark. I mean, if I see a picture of you, I'm not going to be inclined to really want to buy something from you. That's true. I, that's why I use the Apple <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. I'm, I'm just teasing, buddy. Uh, I am teasing. That is not nice. Um, I'm not mean. You know, it's, Actually, it's, I, I, per, I personally think that Mark's a lot better looking than me. Oh, um, yeah. It's, and it's now, a face now, for radio. And now that I'm losing my hair and graying and everything else, I for sure 100% wish. And Mark has a six-pack of abs, and I have – a six pack of jelly rolls. So there is something to be said for being in shape. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. All right. <laughs> no, no, no one feels badly for you. For everybody that met Duran in Vegas, we all, we all know he's, he's, <laughs> he's, he's joking. Okay. Yes. So, all right. So Pinterest is a viable option. I've been on Pinterest a little bit. I haven't spent a whole lot of time on it, to be honest. I, I, you know, I don't know. It's hard. How do you even measure it? Is there a way to do get analytics on, on Pinterest like you can on Facebook? Is not, there any paid advertising on there? I don't know if yet. Yeah, to be honest, again, I don't know. I haven't looked into Pinterest that far. You know, it's a f funny story. My wife and I have been um, very successful um, with with getting viral on both YouTube and on on Pinterest. And I'll tell you, you know, just a quick backstory. We put some videos up on YouTube several years back, and. Uh, and, you know, pictures of my kids and I, nothing, nothing I thought was anything of, you know, uh, a viral nature. And, right. uh, but I guess when you have a, a pregnant belly and you see like a, uh, you know, an arm protruding out of a pregnant belly, um, or Whoa. partial, um, it, it does go, could go viral. And so we've got a, we've got a couple of videos that hit the, I think they both hit the 10 million mark. Yeah, on, I, th on I think YouTube. anything Lauren does on YouTube is going to go viral just because uh, it's of, it's of the way she looks. Thank you. Yeah. She is a yeah. beautiful one. Um, but what's funny is, so we get these, we, 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 we get these, we have these viral accounts on YouTube and, you know, and we, people asked us, what, how did you go? We don't, I don't know. I mean, like sometimes you just don't know why you go viral. I can't tell you specific. I mean, I tagged it correctly. I did a couple of things creatively. You know, if, if, you know, people were mentioning a comment alien. So I probably tagged it alien baby or something funny. Right. Um, anyway, but, but then we did Pinterest and my wife went on Pinterest and she pinned a, my wife's really into health and, and wellness. And so we pinned something. Um, on her, uh, or she pins something on her health board, and she, I think, within like three months, had seventy five thousand followers on her on her Pinterest account. So, like, it's really interesting because we sort of the accidental, uh, you know, approach to that got me into doing some research on Pinterest and realizing how you can really go somewhere. Now, I don't, from a measurable standpoint, you know, there's nothing near what Facebook offers in terms of understanding. Uh, what your conversion rate is, but I'm right. sure there's stuff out there now built to to measuring, you know, what Pinterest does for you. Yeah, I think you know the uh, management guru Peter Drucker is quoted as saying, "Whatever uh, is measured is managed." Yeah. Right. So if you're not measuring it, you're really not managing it. So you should really know some key numbers within your any kind of pay per click campaign, right? How much are you getting per click? What's your conversion rate? What's your allowable acquisition cost? Right? And yeah, but, but that what's, what's, your, what's your lifetime customer value? Yeah, Otherwise, you're shooting in the dark. I, I get that. But I think the, the other side goes like a Pinterest. Your, those are photos being pinned from your web page. So you can, in theory, track through, through Google Analytics, you can track the process of the referral process of where those where those clicks are going if you've built if you've built a page specifically to get pinned like you built a you know a viral image um, and then there's a call to action on that page right. um, there there are ways to, to track that for sure um, but yeah, yeah but, like, a, like a Google Analytics tracking link but yeah but, but look if you're putting stuff out there you can't track everything so so you you're going to constantly put stuff out there that are and you're gonna find out like why do I have why is this article that I wrote on this website? Like for me, I do a lot of, I write a lot of stuff. Um, like I'll, like the, the other day I, I got, I got upset because like two guys in one day. I disagree. You should track everything. No, okay. If you're not tracking, how do you know it's working? Because, because I'm not, I, there's no real, I, there's no real, like for me writing, for me writing a, a thing, I wrote to basically vent. It wasn't to, there wasn't a, a conversion on the other side. Oh, I know. Okay. Well, that's different. That you're, if you're just going to do something for fun. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Yeah, so, and it is my passion. I enjoy writing stories and talking about my journey in life. Um, so th you, I agree with what Mark's saying, but life to me isn't all about business. Um, and I don't think Mark says either, either but, but when it comes to things, Mark, you, you are, you, you spend most of your time focused on what you get paid to do. I spend, uh, uh, I spend quite a bit of time focused on things I don't get paid to do, which is stupid at some level, right? It's not well, smart. Well, not necessarily. It, it, there's no right or wrong. It's what you choose to do. Exactly. Exactly. So for me, I, I wrote, I, the, other, the other day I had a couple people hit me up on LinkedIn um, in the same day asking me to look at their potential uh, investment. I said, great. I don't normally do this. I don't right. normally do this. Like, I don't usually get back to people because I get a lot of I get a lot of in mails on my in LinkedIn daily from people that want me to look at something. Or, but I got back to both these guys, and neither one of them got back to me. And I thought to myself, okay, you reached out to me as a favor to you to look at your investment, and you didn't get back to me. So right. I offered to look at it, and I, I know, I, and I even said, you know, normally I don't, but I'd love to help you out. Send it over to me. I got a little time. I was on vacation. I want to take. I would. I would have taken a look for them. And long story short, is neither one. So within like twenty minutes, I had written a nice five hundred word blog post. That's going to be. That's going to be in the next magazine here in San Diego, which right. talks about which talks about poor communication. So fantastic. And, it, and all it talks about is the people's lack how how entrepreneurs that that that. That, that get into a business, the, the number one key to success, I believe, in business is communication. Right. Because if you, can't, if you can't communicate with your customers, you can't communicate with your investors, how are you going to succeed? So um, it, to me, it, I, you know, I, said, I said poor communication is planned failure. That's it. There's okay. no, you know. So, so I, I went through and I wrote it, and it, was, it wasn't to, to, you know, I wasn't trying to figure out, well, is it going to convert? I don't care. It's me. I'm writing about things that, that I want people to yeah, know about. Yeah, but ultimately that kind of thing will convert because you're, you're expanding your sphere of influence in the yeah. community that you're writing yeah. to, which is yeah. why you write in a magazine. Yeah. Right? The magazine's already doing all that for you. Correct. So you're just building but, your, your influence. But going back to like a Pinterest, I think for, for, for um, they're like, here's what's funny is you may not even realize that you have something pinned on like women write. So the, 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 the lowest paying job on the planet is blogging, right? right. Because right. you spend a ton of time blogging. And generally, if you're not in the top 3%, you don't get paid a stinking penny. Well, and, no, and no one's going to, how does anybody even find you? Well, you got to blast it out to your friends and help your friend. And I've watched a lot of friends over the years. Blog, and I, I, I can't say I've done it myself because I haven't, but I blog on other platforms and I have had articles that done, have done well. But, but if you're trying to create your own blog and there are very, I have friends that are very, very talented. They're talented chefs. They're talented at business. They write these blogs. They're, I mean, I, I literally, I know one guy, he's a brilliant marketing guy, brilliant marketing guy. Right. He just doesn't have any followers, but doesn't, he writes, doesn't have any followers. He just writes, I mean, he has a few, but like he, he's genius. He's genius. And yet, his his sphere of influence is so small because he hasn't gone out and really and and that's his life. His life is marketing, and so it's just interesting because blogging. There's so many bugs, but if you put an image to a blog, right, right, and the image goes viral, like let's say nobody's reading the blog, but the image went viral, like you created some sort of, um, you know, what they call they call those uh, an, an infographic. Um, an infographic is what you see, like you know, five bubbles or eight bubbles in the steps of. You know why you shouldn't drink Coca Cola because your belly will look like this kind of thing. Right. Um, so, um, so, so you may have an infographic on your page. It gets pinned to Pinterest, and all of a sudden you start getting traffic to your to your blog because sure. of that picture. Because the picture, if you click on Pinterest, goes to your blog. So there are certain things that you know, like someone could say, my favorite my favorite place to live. I want to live lakefront on this property, and that property picture is posted on on ReserveLand.com or my my Frontier Properties.com, whatever it is. Um, right. it's going to be, or Frontier Properties USA, it's going to be blasted on, um, on, on Pinterest and people will click it if it goes viral. Right. And I, I want to give everybody an actionable step to take. You should not be spending your time posting on Pinterest and Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. You should create one post and your VA should be spending time going into those accounts because Dran, you can get lost in that stuff. Totally. You know, you start posting and all of a sudden you're like looking around, you're clicking around. Next thing you know, an hour's gone by and you're looking at your, you know, sister-in-law's baby pictures on Facebook. Yeah. So I think it takes some discipline to just say, okay, this is something that's really not a good use of my time. It's important, 
to try to be ubiquitous on these sites in, in some respect, if you're going to measure it and manage it and do that, I think it's better to focus on Facebook, which we're going to get back to. But if you're going to do Facebook and Pinterest, you shouldn't really be the one doing it, right? You should be focused on the two main important aspects of this business, which are deal flow, buying properties, penny, pennies on the dollar, and marketing, selling that property. And the marketing aspect of it is is it so important that you need to manage the VAs, but you shouldn't be the one creating it. Would you agree? I, I would agree. I, I guess for me, this conversation isn't just about land. Obviously, we, as we talk and we do this podcast, it's it's I'm, I'm sort of speaking a little bit more broad in general. Uh, and, and I'm sure that half you guys just got lost in my, you know, 10 minute rant on about Pinterest. But but I'm just letting you guys know that that in reality, um, as Mark said, it isn't simple to figure out. Not everything is measurable and and uh, and let those who do understand it handle it. Right. And I, I, I do disagree. Everything's measurable. You can have track. You can have tracking links on everything and you can software can handle all this stuff. Dran, what are you doing? Me? Yeah, you're 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 opening up mail. It's a it's a, uh, it's a tax bill. I'm just reading. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm listening to, like this scratching noise. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> can you uh, can you wait till after the podcast? To, I'm, to I'm read done. Your mail? I'm sorry. It was it looked it looked really important until I actually opened it and read it. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'm going to refer you to Adrian. And uh, he's, yes. he's, he, he can get you some ADD meds. <laughs> we'll trade. We'll trade, yeah. <laughs> Coach, coaching for some uh, from ADD training. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. So Facebook, let's get back to it. You're, you're on there right now. You're testing it. And it's going great. So tell us what's going on with it. I'm, I, I'm not giving you my secrets. You don't Mark. have to give the secret. Just tell us what, what your results have been. My results have been. Um, just, say, know, just say in general. You don't tell us what you're, how you're doing it. What you're doing and what the results have been? Um, well, I am I am targeting specific demographics for specific properties, right? And again, going back to it, these are, this is something that I know quite well over, over the years of selling thousands of uh, parcels of land. Mark and I sort of know our demographic quite well. We right. know who buy we know who buys what and why they buy it, and even people that don't buy, we know where the inquiries come from and why the inquiries come to us and. And what they're looking for, so it sort of gauges. It gives us a gauge as to what maybe a direction uh, and and who to target. Like you know, we've talked about in the past. You know, um, you know, there's there's certain people um, like Jeff a Axton who is a firefighter. Well, you you target a specific demographic of firefighters, and it doesn't have to be. This is this could be offline. You could go. You could do a direct mail campaign um, to to a group of firefighters or something um, that are buying land because hey, maybe they're close to retirement. Whatever the case is. Um, and you get and, and you and that niche works for you and then you continue to target that niche or maybe it's nurses or maybe and we've talked again we've discussed it before so on Facebook that that platform sort of allows you to target specific demographics and I've been successful at targeting these specific demographics right. for specific properties and you're paying like eight cents a click no I mean it's it goes depends on the on the uh, on the actual uh, ad but yes from eight cents to a dollar fifty a click. Okay, eight cents a dollar fifty a click. And what's what? What are the results? How many leads have that generated? Um, my click conversion is astronomical. Um, so, like, and it clicks. So, so for me, um, you know, I, I look at a, a at a conversion in terms of some of these things. To me, is it, of course, is the, the end conversion is the sale. The initial conversion is the click to the website and reading the website. Um, you know, and time spent on the website, but obviously at the end of the day, I'm I, the the actual conversion to sales, what you're tracking. Um, I, but I also like to see a, con, a a nice conversion from Facebook to the website, and then of course from the website to a conversion. So right. So I'm 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 marketing specific properties. The 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 ads will take you directly to that particular property, and then from that from that property, there's a call to action. Right. So now, are you doing just a regular ad or a promotion? Like, for example, for me on Facebook, I like to do promotions. You know, click here and register, you know, for the pool to win a free piece of land, right? Yeah. Or to get $250 off a piece of property. Some yeah. type of promotion to build my list and convert that list into a sale. Yeah. Now are, that's, you, are, you doing, are you doing something like that? I, I'm, I'm working on that. So, I'm, I, look, you, you gotta, you've got to do um, – you've got to figure out – of the four or five or six different ideas that you have within within that marketing platform, you got to figure out which one converts best. 
I like the list aspect. I do have my list and I do send out emails to my list, but I, um, but I also like, I also like campaigns that go directly because I can, I can certainly convert a lot faster, um, by getting someone to, to inquire on a property within 30 minutes, not right. having to build that entire campaign and sell a land. So, so like, here's the interesting part. Like the dynamic would be, I build a list and then in a week I go market. Well, guess what? I may have sold that property in a week and if I don't have something similar or like, I may not be able to sell it. So I can build that list. So for me, if I can sell a property in 30 minutes or an hour, when I say that, I mean, I've, I've got someone committing to buy, send me a down payment by just clicking and reading the website. Um, that, that to me is, um, is something I'm trying. Um, and we'll see how successful in, in converting that, that is. Um, and then of course the list side as well and see, and, and like Mark, Mark, Mark's had a lot of success with that. On the list side, are you building list mark on Facebook? Yeah, I'm building my list. That's all you're doing. But, uh, yeah, it's all I'm doing. I'm breaking even, right, yeah. on the list. Okay. Because I'm paying a lot more per click because my my net so much wider than yours. Yeah. But yeah. And, and I think that one of the things that Mark that, that I'm going to be helping Mark out with is sort of targeting specific demographics. Um, because I think once you target it, if you have an extremely broad demographic. Uh, Facebook's going to charge you more money, right? So, yeah, exactly, exactly. And so, if you got you've got to target groups, and if those groups aren't converting, you try different groups. So um, there's, but there's there's also what I told Mark, and I'm sure some listeners have seen Mark's campaigns pop up on their uh, on their Facebook um, timeline, um, is or newsfeed is that is that graphics are key. Um, in the conversion process of getting them to click and 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 sign up, and you really want to have. Um, I, I I'm not a huge fan of all Mark's graphics. I think some of them are cool, some of them aren't so cool. Um, but you really want to keep that. Like it, it needs to be refreshed. It needs to be new. Like if it's not working for a week, you got to try. You got to right. try a new image. So right. and we do, we do new images every week. Okay. Yeah, and like, we're managing it and and seeing which ads are converting, which ones aren't. So okay. we're keeping the ads that convert. We're going to the images. We're, sc we're scratching the images that don't convert. Yeah. And we're just constantly tweaking and improving it. And it takes time. You can't, yeah. you can't do a campaign in one week and think no. that it's going to be successful. Or, or, um, you know, you, and, and if it's unsuccessful, that's not going to, that's not a good gauge either. Meaning like if you spent 20 bucks or 50 bucks in a week or a hundred bucks on Facebook and you, and you're not, and there's and there's no real success there. It doesn't mean you've done the campaign wrong. It may, you may have to retarget the campaign right. from, a, from a demographic standpoint. That doesn't mean your image is bad. It just means that you may have targeted the completely wrong group of people. Exactly. So exactly. That's why that's why it's not your business to be doing that. Let people that know how to do it do it. Yeah. Again, if you want Duran to help you do that, you know, email me and there we might have a program for you. Yeah. If you qualify. If you qualify, if you qualify, which you probably, you probably, <laughs> you probably do. If you have a heartbeat, you if you have a heartbeat, you qualify. If you can listen to this podcast, you qualify. You qualify. So uh, that's good. Yeah. So uh, how how so, are we doing time wise? Because I know you're short on time. I've got a, I've got a few more minutes, Mark. I mean, are there any other questions you want to talk about? From uh, uh, you know, maybe maybe tell me a little bit about how you did your Twitter campaigns, just so the listeners can understand. I what I, I mean, Twitter. Here's here's what's not. Here's what not to do. Don't hashtag you, land, hashtag buy, hashtag, hashtag land, hashtag, hashtag buy. Group. Here's a link to my property. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what not to do. If so, <laughs> if someone's following you, you know, there's a problem. Like, there are bots. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't even follow back. Like you know, look at my Twitter thing. It's like I've got I don't know how many followers, not that many, but maybe a couple hundred or whatever it is. Like I don't follow anyone. I mean, I just don't spend any time on it. You've got to spend time. And you've got yeah. to engage people on social media. It's, I, I think we talked about this. It's like a big party, right? And you go to a party and the first thing you say to somebody isn't, hey, what do you do for a living? Uh, and oh, by the way, I do this. And do you want one? Like that's not how you engage at a party. You just kind of start talking about, you know, hey, what do you do? Or, you know, this is what I like to do. And you would build rapport and then eventually you'd get to the point that says, hey, this is what I do. You know, you might have some interest in it or maybe you have some friends that have some interest in it. Unless, of course, you're an insurance salesman and that's the first thing you lead with. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm not and, kidding. And, 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 and just so everyone knows, we, Mark and I, and, and I'm sure all of you have dealt with people 
that literally the, the number one thing on their mind, they don't care about you. They don't care about anything around them. They care about one thing and that's the sale. The sale, and, exactly. And, can't, yeah. and unfortunately, that's the most frustrating part uh, uh, you know, uh, of life is that some people have their head wrapped around money and that's all. And I get that money is a ways to a means to, to live a good life. But in reality, uh, you know, don't stress and don't live your life focused that way. Cause guess what? That's plan. That is plan failure because you want to, you want to walk into a place and get to know people and let them know that you, you know, you, you do business a certain way and, and, and you have integrity. And a lot of guys, I mean, I, I watched, I've watched people recently that, that have like hounded me and my wife and other people about one thing. And I'm like, leave me alone. Like right. it's, the push, you, it's instant pushback, you know? So, yeah, exactly. I mean, and the economy is different. You know, maybe 10 years ago, that might have been effective. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. But now it's definitely not effective. And we're more in a connection economy. How yeah. big are your? How big is your network? Yeah, right. How much influence do you have in that network? And the result of that being of having those that network like you and trust you eventually will bring in money. That's yeah. that's just how it works today. Because if you're trying to sell something, the fact of the matter is they're going to go home and they're going to see that same exact thing cheaper on their Facebook on their on their Facebook newsfeed. Yeah. Exactly. That's just that's just if they're searching for it. If they're in, if it reality is they're looking for new car insurance, Geico's going to pop up. Right. And, yeah. And Geico, yeah. Exactly. Geico's going to be cheaper than you today. Today you've got to give to get. Yep. Would you agree? Totally. Yeah. But if if all you're looking for is if if in your heart you're only giving to get, then there's a disconnect there as well. That's which is why I think your your why is so important, and. You know, we talked about that a lot. We don't have time to talk about that now. All right. So, Duran, I know you got to go. What's your tip of the week? My tip of the week is a website called OvernightPrints.com. OvernightPrints.com. Okay. All right. Let's check it out. And what, what they do is they print. You got to go find a coupon code. So, one thing that Mark and I will always tell you to do is go search whatever website you're at. And then the next word is going to be coupon code. <laughs> or next exactly. two words behind that. Um, you can get a great coupon code. Um, you can print anything from business cards to flyers. They do it all. Um, I like I like the website. I've had a couple of problems with them in the past, but they've been really good from a customer service standpoint of fixing the problems. Um, you can get business cards or flyers shipped literally overnight. Um, the overnight shipping can be a little bit expensive, but but they get things done quickly. So, they do, and they, they do good work. Yep. All right, I love it. Overnight prints. In fact, uh, I'm going to need a land brochure printed up pretty soon, anyways. So I'll I'll try overnight prints for my land brochure, and uh, and see how that goes. All right. So my tip of the week is a little meditation app. Everybody knows I meditate and uh, keeps you centered, helps you a lot. I think I don't think I've brought this up before. It's a iPhone app. It might be on Android as well, but I love it. It is headspace.com and just kind of helps you walk through your meditation. The guy's got this great British voice. He's been on a TED talk. He was a, he's a British guy that actually became like a monk. And, uh, I really enjoy it. It's not the app itself, uh, is a subscription, but it's not too expensive. So check it out. Headspace.com. You can also get it on your computer as well. And, uh, it's great. So Duran's got to go. I do want to remind everybody, leave, a, leave us, you know, some love, give us some love and uh, leave us a comment on iTunes and let us know how we're doing. Also, if you want to get on the land hub, email us as well. And I'll have a coupon code for you uh, because you're a podcast listener. And if you want to buy some wholesale land, go to reserveland.com. Again, check out landhub.com. And if Duran doesn't have anything for you, check out frontierpropertiesusa.com. And of course, to learn more tips, tricks, techniques, go to www.thelandgeek.com. Download the Passive Income Blueprint. Get the ebook, How to Avoid the Three Fatal Land Buying Mistakes. And of course, get this always informative and engaging podcast delivered each week to your email inbox. I want to thank everyone again for taking your valuable time to listen to our podcast. Duran, thanks so much. Thank you. Have a great week, buddy. You too. And we'll, uh, we'll talk to you next week. All right. We'll see everybody uh, next week. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of The Land Geek. Join us next time for more tips, secrets, and information that will help you succeed. Stay connected with The Land Geek on Facebook at facebook.com slash thelandgeek.